After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of how to evaluate a microscopic representation of a system and comment on the various properties it is illustrating referencing the particulate model of matter. I would like to apply our thinking here about microscopic representations in the particulate model of matter to take a look at a particulate representation we evaluated during a let's apply activity in class. If you remember from class, this right here was a microscopic representation uh, meant to represent something like soda water. And how we got to that is we saw that it was a sealed container. It contained water, had some CO2, nitrogen from air, a little oxygen. It was cold. This is approximately 7 degrees Celsius. And it was pressurized above the normal atmospheric pressure that we consider to be one atmosphere. So we said, OK, this is representing soda water or carbonated water. But of course we know when we say that that there are some unrealistic things about this representation. This is just a hieroglyphic sort of picture of this system. And the issues are basically that molecules are not this big with reference to the container. Uh, molecules in real systems are in constant motion. Here we don't have molecules in motion, of course. But there are things in this microscopic representation that are important that we can represent about this system. For example, we can see that we have a liquid phase down in this region. We have substances in the gas phase above the headspace of the liquid. We can see that the liquid essentially is water, but has a little bit of CO2 and nitrogen dissolved into it. And we can see that in the gas phase, there are four different substances, because there are four different types of particles. There's nitrogen, there's CO2, there's oxygen, and there's water. Now let's take a closer look at some of the more dynamic aspects the first thing we can notice here with this system is that if all of the particles in the system exist under the same temperature, we can therefore assume that all the particles have the same average kinetic energy. We know that the average kinetic energy within the particulate model of matter is proportional to the temperature of the system. So if everything's at the same temperature, all the particles have the same average kinetic energy. Now. That does not mean that they're moving all with the same velocity. That's because the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared, where the velocity is v, m is the mass. This means that particles of lighter mass are actually moving at a higher velocity than particles of a heavier mass, which must be moving at a slower velocity if the average kinetic energy is the same for all the particles. So. All the particles have the same average kinetic energy, but the lighter particles have the highest average velocity. And it turns out in this system, water molecules have the lightest molar mass and therefore have the highest average velocity. Now we could also ask ourselves which phase here has the lowest or most negative potential energy. And we know that potential energy is dependent on two factors, distance between particles, as well as the attractive force between the particles, or the repulsive force if they get too close. So when we have a system with a gas and a liquid, it's pretty simple. We know that the particles of the liquid phase must have the most po negative potential energy, because on average they are closer together than the particles in the gas phase. They also, because they're in the liquid phase, have a stronger attractive force, which also lends to the potential energy being more negative for the particles in the liquid phase. And in this case, that would be the water. If we wanted to ask ourselves, finally, which substance here has the high or lowest vapor pressure, we would say, well, it's got to be the substance that's in the liquid phase because it has a vapor pressure below the external pressure because it's a liquid. Substances like nitrogen, and CO2, and oxygen have vapor pressures much higher than the external pressure under these conditions, so they exist in the gas phase. Therefore, we would say the liquid phase has the lowest vapor pressure. In this case, that specifically refers to water.